In this segment we are going to build and launch the JIX RVM and our debugger called RDB. So here is a directory which contains the JIX RVM and actually also our RDB. Our RDB is just a little bit of extra you add to the JIX RVM. You see things here like the RVM directory which contains the source code of the RVM, the tools directory which contains the native code of the launcher and the boot image writer and also code we use for the RDB debugger. So the first thing we want to do is build the JAX RVM. For that we use AND and some command line options. For example we want to say that the host and actually also the target configuration is x86 64 for OS X. So this is the only configuration that RDB or debugger supports. So if you want to look at it uh, on Linux, you'd first have to port some of the features of RDB. Then we want to say which configuration of the JAX RVM you want to build. Uh, we just build the simplest configuration, base base, uh, mark sweep. So it goes quickly. So we start the build and while it's building we're going to look a little bit at what's actually going on here. Let's look at the slide. So when we want to build the JAX RVM, we're going to run first a normal Java program in the hotspot VM. So we launch a Java program, a Java application called the boot image writer. So boot image writer is a Java class that we're going to execute and that class is going to create the boot image which we need to launch the JAX RVM later on. It does that by essentially loading classes like VM that make up the JAX RVM. It loads those classes, some of them it instantiates and it compiles the methods of those classes into native x86 machine code and essentially what it does is boot up the virtual machine almost, not entirely, but it loads a lot of classes, executes code, sets up some structures and then when it's pretty much done booting it says okay now we need to create a snapshot called the boot image, a snapshot of the virtual machine. So the boot image writer is going to take all those Java objects that have been instantiated, that make up the virtual machine, it's going to serialize them into a file. And it's going to serialize them in the format, the exact format that the JAX RVM uses for, return, for internally representing those objects. So let's say the VM or the R, some RVM class object, uh, which exists in the normal Java heap as a normal Java object in Hotspot, we're going to read out those fields and we're going to add a few header fields and put the layout the way that JAX RVM expects it. And so in the boot image we'll end up with an object of that type that looks exactly the way the JAX RVM wants objects to look. And we do that for everything. So after this serialization step we have all the heap objects, some other internal structures we need. And we also go and we find all the classes that were loaded like VM or RVM class or many others, we find all the methods and we compile those methods with the um, compiler that's part of the JAX RVM into x86 instructions and those instructions are essentially kept in byte arrays, they're also written into the boot image. So the boot image contains code and data. And now we're done creating the boot image, so we just have a file which essentially is a snapshot of an almost booted virtual machine. And now when we want to launch a virtual machine, a JAX RVM, we're running a program, a C program, a very small C program called the boot image runner. That's basically a loader of the boot image. And it also contains a very thin layer um, of native code wrapping around system calls. And what this boot image runner does is it mmaps the boot image files into virtual memory. And so now we have this almost booted virtual machine sitting here and the boot image runner needs to just jump to the right address where there is a compiled code of a method called VM boot and it starts executing. So 
this is the process of building and launching Jax RVM. Let's see whether we're really done. Yeah, it only took one minute, uh, five seconds to build. So after building, we have a disk directory with the corresponding configuration base base mark sweep for x86. And in there, you have various things. For example, our boot image consisting of the code, the data, and also the reference map, which tells us where in these images we find pointers into the heap, so the garbage collector can trace things. Then we have two char files with compiled Java code, so this bytecode in there, class files, the virtual machine itself, which is written in Java mostly, and the runtime library here, which is the the class pass library. Then we have the Jax RVM executable, so the native C program, which is this very small boot image runner. And we have the script RVM, which we use to launch the Jax RVM. And RDB, which we use to launch the debugger, which then launches the Jax RVM. So let's see how we can launch something uh, let's say for example rvm and then uh, like a normal java command line so like java but you say rvm uh, class pass um, I have some classes here uh, for example hello world oops dot slash and we run a normal java program called hello world but not with the normal Java, but with the RVM. So this is the same as saying Java, this would run it with hotspot, this command runs it with the Jax RVM. And now we can also launch this under the debugger, our debugger called RDB, we just use the RDB script instead of the RVM script with the same command line. So the class pass where the application lives and the main class we want to launch, the application and this will prompt us for the password here because it goes through sudo it needs root permissions to do the debugging I mistype and it launches our graphical user interface of RDB takes a little while and here we are 